Hey, Anna. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Well, let's wait for a couple more people to hop on in, and then we'll get going. Okay. So what have you been up to during these last couple of weeks? Um, thankfully, my golf course is still open, so I've been able to practice and play. Um, the range is closed, but we can still do a bunch of short game, and there's a nice wedge area for me. So I've been able to play, which is really I'm really thankful for, given what's going on. So where do you practice out of? I practice at a Carolina golf club in Charlotte, and then I'm also members at Cabarrus Country Club up okay. in Concord, where my parents are. I've been to Cabarrus. Really nice place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's doing well. They just redid their practice green, and that was a oh, great call. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited about that. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you were obviously one of the mentor coaches um, for the Linville Cup for this past year. Why is that Linville Cup so meaningful to you? I was not expecting to be a coach, for one. Um, and so I think that kind of just added the weight of how much I really enjoyed it um, and was able to just kind of let loose and be on the other side of the ropes because I have never coached anything before. <laughs> um, and so kind of being on the other side, it was really special. And I loved my girls. I was Team Virginia, obviously. And uh, my girls were awesome. I mean, they were hilarious and they enjoyed it. And that's kind of what me and um, my co co coach um, just wanted for the girls was to just have fun and enjoy it. And they definitely did. And we definitely rallied throughout the three days. So it was, it was incredible just to be able to give back in a small way. During the mentor dinner, you mentioned that you found the right fit for you at UVA. Mm -hmm. Why was that? You know, what, what was that one feeling that you had? I got a gut feeling. Um, and it's crazy. And I did, someone told me that, I can't remember who, um, was like, you'll just get a gut feeling. And I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Because um, I had visited six schools before I even got to Virginia. And that was my last school I visited. And I was like, I haven't felt anything yet, guys. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was just walking around the grounds and I had met Kim and just, she explained, you know, the really good balance between the athletics and academics, which is what I was looking for. And I went to a football game and I was sitting with my parents and I was like, I don't want to be sitting with my parents. I want to be sitting over there with all the students. Like that's where I was drawn to and really felt like I should be. And I'm really thankful that it worked out and that's where I went and I loved it. And it was definitely the right place for me. Here's the first question from our viewers from Madison. How can I still practice when all the golf courses are closed due to coronavirus? So when I um, was back in high school, one of the drills my coach had me do was be in front of a mirror and we called it mirroring. And that is definitely a great way to practice. I still do it now. I've got a mirror set up here. Um, and that's awesome just to practice your swing and kind of make sure you're hitting the points you want to in your golf court, in your golf swing. Um, so I'll be doing that as well. Um, and so that's a great one. And um, I have a putting mat, I guess, to practice my putting stroke. And so I can, you can do that inside as well. Um, so you can definitely make it interesting and – find some things to do around the house. Um, but those are the two things that I haven't had to be forced into doing only yet. Um, but that's definitely the strategy I'll be taking. Madison, I'm going to have um, Robert Linville do some tips with us next week. So keep it, keep in mind and stay on Instagram with us for next week. We'll be up doing some things with him. Um, moving on for that. How can our girls learn to recognize that gut feeling that you were mentioning that you felt for UVA? Um, I think the first step in understanding is kind of realizing if you have that or if you felt it, it's kind of knowing where you want to go um, as far as a big school, a small school, maybe something that leans more towards academics or athletics. Um, and so I really knew, I knew that I kind of want to go to a bigger school. I didn't really want to stay super close to home. Um, and so kind of in that guideline I had for kind of where I wanted to go, I visited those schools and that's kind of where I felt, all right, I was totally drawn to Virginia um, and that's where I ended up going. So understanding kind of what you're originally looking for out of a school um, and also visiting a school that has nothing to do with that so you know that that's what you want is actually a really good opposite way to kind of figure it out. Um, and then have a conversation with your parents as well. It can kind of be tough sometimes, um, but just to tell them kind of what you really want um, instead of maybe what they want for you. And they always want the best for you, but sometimes you need to step up and say, mm, this is really what I want to do. And that was a really big part. And my parents were incredibly supportive with me going to Virginia. And it was great. 
worked out for you, had a very successful mm -hmm. collegiate career. During the off week, so give an example, MK just had a good question for you. Um, you say you had about a week and a half between one college tournament to the next. What was your off tournament practice schedule look like? Um, so the day we got back from a tournament was usually our off day. Um, so I would, I would always take those off days. Um, I'm a big believer kind of in balance. Um, and I mean, there's always that saying that if someone else isn't working or if you're not working, someone else is, right. um, but that can take form in a lot of different ways. And taking that day off from the golf course to work on your mental health is working. And that, I think that's really important just as a side note, um, that I, I don't practice golf every day physically at a golf course. And that's something that probably a lot of people don't do. Um, but it's really important to take care of yourself as well. And that can take shape in a lot of different ways. Um, so I would always take my off day. Um, and that was really important for me and also to kept, catch up on school <laughs> that we might have missed. Um, and then sometimes with tournaments so close, um, sometimes we would have qualifying, sometimes we wouldn't um, just because the terms are so close and we don't want to kind of be super intense, but maybe we want to just start preparing for the next event instead of going through qualifying again. Um, so sometimes that's hit or miss. Um, but so we would probably play, though, within that we can have to keep us competitive, um, but we'd really kind of practice on the things we learned from the past week to apply it to the next week. Do you remember anything in particular from your 2013 PKB Invitational win at Grandover? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I remember something very specific and that is because um, Jennifer Chang, I think it was Jennifer Chang, was playing in front of me and I knew that we were like close and I got my range finder out in the middle of the fairway of 18 to see if she made her birdie putt or not. <laughs> to figure out if I needed to go for the green in two or just lay up and then go in wedge and either make birdie or not. Um, but I remember that very distinctly because I was like, if she makes it, then I have to go for it in two, which I like the distance, I could have done it. Um, but she missed it. I was like, okay, let's just lay up, go with wedge and go from there. So I remember that very distinctly. And my dad remembers that very distinctly as well. <laughs> Yeah. So in round one, you, you've shot an 80. How do you, you came back, you know, eventually one term, as I mentioned, round two, 72, round three, one under 71. How do you recover, you know, forget round one, you know, just throw that in the trash can. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people struggle with, you know, forgetting I'm going to be seven strokes behind the leader at the moment. You know, how, what is that mindset for you, you know, throwing that first, what you consider a bad round out to mm -hmm. get yourself back into a tournament? I struggled with my first rounds for a long time. Um, my first hole was usually always going to be a bogey, um, if not worse. And my first round was usually going to be my worst round of the tournament. Um, thankfully, I've grown and I've worked a lot with my various coaches on getting out of that. Um, but that, I mean, until maybe like my second year of college, my first round was like going to be my worst round. And I would have my coaches come and walk with me for the first hole because it would be a bogey. <laughs> um, so they kind of moved out of that, but I was kind of used to sadly digging myself a little bit of a hole at the start of a tournament and having to work and grind out of it. Um, so that was kind of another tournament for me. A um, little bit of a rough start and then kind of grind my way back into it. Um, but it's also, it's different every day of every day. Like um, my sports psychologist now, it's like, Every day is going to be different. You're going to wake up a little different. You're going to sleep a little different, eat. Like, every day is going to be different. You'll go through your same routine, but you won't have maybe the great putting you had the last day or the great ball striking the next day. Um, so he's like, you just need to play with what you've got that day and make it work. So that's something I've learned, and that has been really instrumental in kind of where I am now. Talk about a routine. What is your morning tournament routine like? So let's say from – how's it changed? Let's go for that first from what you when you started in your junior golf career – to mm -hmm. collegiate career and now as you're playing on the Symmetra Tour? Junior golf, um, I would like to get to the course between an hour, an hour and 15 minutes ahead of schedule, um, or ahead of my tee time. I would, I think I usually always start at the putting green. I still do that now. Do a little bit of putting, like a little bit of technique, and then I would go to the range and then chipping and then back to putting for some more distance, distance putting and just kind of get the feel before I went to tee off. Um, that has still stands um, through college and now. Um, I usually like to go putting, get my technique done, and then go to the range, then back to putting. 
But um, in college, I had a little bit of back injury um, when I was in the gym. So I've got two bulging discs, um, my L4, L5, L5, S1, that happened my second year of college. Um, so that kind of altered what I do in the mornings a little bit. So now I wake up earlier and I go to the gym in the morning. Um, I've got like an ab and like a back kind of, mm, um, oh, I'm blank my word, but like activation, there we go, activation mm -hmm. that I do in the mornings. Um, so I'll go down to the gym. My uh, college roommate my last year, it's just funny because you're a roommate. And so I would have to get up earlier than everybody else. <laughs> so, you know, my car alarm, alarm, my old car horn, she loved hearing that <laughs> really early in the mornings. <laughs> but then I, I would like, you know, get dressed in the dark to, to, to be consist considerate, even though she's already awake, because so my alarm has got to be loud. But, um, so, you know, I would work out in the mornings. I would, I would ask my coach to give me a single if possible, just because it sucks to have to wake up, you know, 45 minutes earlier than you have to so that I can go work out, and I didn't want to inflict that on anybody else, but my roommate was a great sport about it. She was great, but, um, and then I still do that now, because um, it's all about kind of maintaining, get the abs strong and my back strong, just because I didn't have to have surgery, um, but I hope that I never have to, so now it's all kind of preventative. Um, right. I haven't had pain in like three years, um, so it's just really preventative, just so I don't ever have to be in that position again and have to have surgery. So here's another question here. 12, skip to grade, feel a little short off the tee currently. Should I consider a gap year? I feel my ranking may not be high enough at 16. Thoughts? Okay. Um, I do think gap years can be very beneficial um, depending on a lot of different things. Um, Distance off the tee, um, I think, is important, um, but it might not be as important as short game. <laughs> um, I think short game is definitely still where I need to be spending all my time. Um, it's really critical. Um, depending on maybe where you're looking to go, um, if that coach, if they've recruited girls that hit it long in the past, and that's kind of really where you want to go, and maybe spend a little more time in the gym and kind of with your coach kind of working on getting that distance so that you can, you know, work towards that goal. Um, so I think, it, I think it does depend. Um, that's definitely a pretty personal question. Um, so it kind of depends on where you want to go. And um, if that is your end goal, then maybe adding the distance, taking the year to really get that and mature and then go where you want to go. Yeah, and at 12, you've got a long way to go before you're really eventually getting into picking a college. So you're going to be getting a lot of distance gaining quite a lot of distance between here and now too so i bet you'll be ready to go by then all right let's see what's next what is the most nervous you've ever been for an opening tee shot <laughs> um well that's a pretty easy one given i was the very first person to tee off at augusta national on saturday at last year's augusta national women's amateur wearing my shirt right now um, it was insane. <laughs> I, that's the most nervous I've ever been. That's as many people as ever been on a golf course that I've seen and that I've seen around me on a tee box to watch me hit a golf shot. <laughs> and I mean, it was insane. Like I've got the four legends that just teed off right next to me, Bubba Watson, Condoleezza Rice, the chairman, like my friends and family were there. Like it was just insanity. And I just wanted to get the ball off the ground and out there. And I did that, thankfully. And it looked great from the tee box, which is perfect. But that, oh my gosh, I was shaking. And I just kept walking. I don't know. I don't know if there's a video, but I was just like walking around. Like I couldn't stand still. It's like, oh my gosh. Whew. But it was great. That was a And I, I read a recap from the um, Virginia SID from the previous round where you had to get in, into a playoff just to make it into the final round. And you weren't even as nervous as you were for that as you were for the first tee, right? Correct. Yeah. I, I enjoy playoffs. I don't know. I've, I've kind of always enjoyed playoffs. I haven't been in that many, but I don't know. I really like just playoffs because it kind of, you go against someone specific, kind of like match play. And we don't have a lot of that in golf. And I just really enjoy it. It really pumps me up. And I mean, in that playoff, I hit my drive, like an actual like 15 yard, like it just pumps me up and really gets me going. So I was way more excited for that and then definitely more nervous on Saturday morning. <laughs> 
So here's another question for you. What does a typical, the typical day of practice during the season look like for you? Um, I like to work out. So when I can go to a gym, <laughs> um, I really like to work out in the morning um, and kind of get my day started that way. Um, so that's what I'll do. And then I'll usually come home and have lunch and then I'll head out to the golf course. Um, I'll spend more of my time on my short game practice. Um, I've got some putting technique drills that I do um, and then kind of move my way up. I'll go to the chip and green because they're kind of close to each other. And then I'll go to the range. Um, I've been working really hard with my coach. Um, so my, my swing is feeling really solid, which is awesome. So when I go to the range, it's really just kind of maintenance and kind of maintaining kind of what we've been working on so I don't black off or anything. Um, and then I'll, I'll play um, two or three times during the week. Uh, sometimes nine holes, sometimes I'll get a game with someone and we'll go play 18. So during those games, are you trying to do something specific with your game, or are you trying to just really work on hitting a target with a certain iron, a certain tee, or are you trying to really game plan for your next event? You know, unfortunately, the, you know, the Iowa Invitational and then the Davidson Tournament are canceled, so I can't really give those as an example. But uh... um, With where we're at right now in the world, when we have a date, uh, so the National Tour told us June 15th, hopefully, is when they're hoping to get us back out there. Um, but the games that I'm playing now are really just to keep me competitive. Okay. So when I go out there to play, I'm going to play to put up a good score and compete and try to make some putts and get some up and downs and really kind of see the ball go in the hole. Um, so that's kind of what I do when I'm playing um, is I really try and play um, to stay competitive and not necessarily work on something, but to forget that and go play and see how it does under a little bit of pressure to try and simulate a tournament. So you had a lot of nerves on that first tee at Augusta. How'd you deal with them? Did you have any, you know, did you work with your sports psychologist beforehand or are you just like, all right, I'm just going to step up there and hit it? Yeah, um, a little bit of both. Um, his big thing was just to embrace it. I mean, when am I ever going to be in that position again? Especially because I knew I was going to be turning professional. Right. So he was really just like, embrace it, embrace everything. Just take everything in the walk from the, um, from the practice screen over to the tee box, like just everyone around, like just embrace it all. Um, so that's what I really tried to do. Um, and I think I did do that. I mean, I, the whole day was just amazing. Um, so that, and then I also, depending on your length, it might not be a driver hole. Um, so I was working with my swing coach and he was like, you know, do you want to, you know, maybe hit, you know, your forward? I'm like, I can't hit forward. <laughs> I'm the first person teeing off. I'm not my driver. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that because um, forward would take the bunker and those trees because it gets pretty narrow up there out of yeah. out of play. I was like, I'm the first person teeing off. I can't stand up there with a forward. <laughs> I'm hitting my driver, and it got me in trouble. But I was like, that's what we're gonna do. That's my game plan, and I went out and did it, and it was great. <laughs> What are some strategies to not compound a mistake? So, for example, you know, you talked about how in, in your junior golf career you would typically start off with a bad bogey. You eventually got out of that, you know, rut. How did you get out of it? So I tried a few different things. Um, I would try to play maybe the first three holes on the range before teeing off. Um, so I would hit my driver and think, okay, I'd be about this distance out, kind of hit that to a target and kind of go from there. Um, and also as far as like making a bogey, I usually typically wouldn't make a bogey and then another bogey on my first, on my second hole. It was usually just kind of that first one that like nerves on the tee. Um, but I was really good about forgetting about it. So I knew it was coming for a while. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's going to be a bogey. <laughs> um, but then I was really, I was able to kind of forget it almost immediately and go on and play the rest of the rest of my round. Um, so it's really just every hole is a fresh start. Every hole is different, looks different, fins different. You're going to be in different positions. Um, and that's every single day as well. So it's really just a fresh start after you're done. Like, it's done. It's in the past. Can't change it. And then move on. Um, so I've, I've always been pretty good about that is kind of not letting things build up. Just I hope it left out of bounds. I did it. Learn from it and then move on. And so that's kind of how I just kind of keep calm. Also, if I kind of make a mistake, just... All right, it happened, learn from it, take it as a challenge, and then move on. One of the questions we both got on a polls that we posted last night was, what are the best, what's one of the best takeaway drills that you do? So um, when I first started playing, um, the first thing, I, one thing that always stuck in my head was 
take all that like you're about to shake someone's hand <laughs> I don't, I, like <laughs> so if you have a constant hand like you just take it back and then it, like if you turn it's like how you would shake someone's hand and you want the club to parallel to the ground and like if you're standing from behind you want to see the club before you see your hands so you want to basically hopefully not see your hands um so i just kind of it's still the first thing that comes to my mind when someone asks me about that it's like oh, i'm just about to shake someone's hand and then go on up <laughs> I don't um so i guess that um, and just kind of be parallel and just take it up from there yeah, that's one of the first things i teach a beginner golfer too is shake on the way back and shake on the way through yeah. So that's, that is, it's funny how a lot of teachers, that's the first thing that they, they, they mention. Yeah, and it still sticks today, so <laughs> that's what I go for. <laughs> We've already talked about how to get out of a pickle, but what's one of an example from your last event you played out on the Symmetra Tour where you really had to use your head to get out of a tough situation? So down in Florida, at the Florida Natural, um, it was incredibly windy, um, very windy, like I had competed in that much wind in a long time. Um, and it was kind of really getting to me. <laughs> um, but what I could really do um, is kind of play to an open spot. Cause I mean, it was blowing like 30 miles per hour left to right into wow. whatever. So I was like, I knew I was gonna maybe miss the green given there was like all water on the left and it was also blowing left to right. I'm like, well, I can't aim. <laughs> I couldn't get myself to aim over the water. So I kind of play to an open spot where I might have had a better chance to get up and down. So kind of planning ahead a little bit, if you think you might be in a problem situation, possibly, then maybe just to plan for it. And I mean, it was just really windy. So I was really just kind of trying to miss in the right spots, um, which is incredibly hard to do. Um, and I really struggled the second day, um, brought it back a little bit the last day, but trying to plan ahead a little bit and just kind of know maybe where your best chance of getting up and down might be. What are the best books that you've read for, you know, sports, toughness, mental toughness, um, or any recommendations you'd have for our girls from any of your sports psychologists, previous coaches you've had, college coaches, or recommendations? So um, two books come to mind. One of them, um, I'm completely blanking on the name. Um, it's a Christian book that my um, Athletes in Action um, leader um, at UVA had given me. Um, and I'm like completely blanking on the name of it. I think the author might be Brian something, um, but I gave it to one of my teammates as well. And it was great. Um, just kind of put it in perspective. I'm a Christian. So just, it really helped me kind of put into perspective what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. um, but the book I just read was The Obstacle is the Way um, by Ryan Holiday. My sports psychologist, uh, Brett McCabe, gave me that one. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, just taking everything kind of as a challenge and kind of understanding you don't have control over everything and that's completely okay. And that's better than okay. Cause if you don't need control over everything, like that's just kind of not how life is designed. Um, and I really enjoyed that book. Um, I actually just got Ryan Holiday's next book, um, Ego is the Enemy. So I'm about to start that one. And I'll link those two in the, um, our Insta, Insta stories later this afternoon for anybody who's interested in seeing what, what those are about. Last couple of questions before we get to our closing. What uh, is the difference that you've seen? You know, you've only had one event so far between college golf to professional golf. Um, it is hard since you've only had one event. Right. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a difficult question. I mean, I would say uh, I'm really not, I'm honestly, I'm really not sure um, how I would answer that yet. Um, I mean, I know short game and getting up and down and making your putts like your par saves and your kind of birdie range putts um kind of really made a difference back at q school at, at q series um there's a big difference between my first week and my second week kind of the girls i was playing with and the girls who made it they were getting up and down from everywhere and making their putts and i wasn't um that's why they're on the lpj and i won this matchup for this year um so i guess that would be a good kind of difference um at least between college semester to maybe LPGA. Um, but as far as specifically college to Symmetra, um, I'm not really sure yet. Um, I'm still learning the semester tour and kind of how it works and travel and everything like that. Um, so I'm not quite sure yet how to fully answer that. Are you looking forward to all the traveling that you're about to be handling in the next couple of months? I am. 
I really like to travel and I love going places to play golf. Um, that was a massive perk from being a college athlete is traveling around and playing on these amazing golf courses that I definitely wouldn't have gotten a chance to do. So given being professional and getting to tour the country again, um, it's incredible and I'm really excited about it. Um, it will, I'm sure, take its toll at some point. Um, I'll definitely have to be careful with take it off weeks to make sure that I stay mentally healthy and physically healthy. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited to go to states I haven't been to yet to play golf. Any final questions for Anna before we head out? <laughs> but I just remembered the book name from Virginia. It's called The Assist. The it Assist. Just pop, okay. It just popped back in. <laughs> All right. Well, Anna, thanks for hopping in. We appreciate giving some of your time and some thoughts on how you got to where you are in your golf game. Stay safe, everybody. We'll have another one. We've got two more on the books right now, Gina Kim and Allison Emery. Gina Kim currently at Duke. She'll eventually, we think, be along with Anna on the Symmetra Tour and eventually on the LPGA. And Allison Emery, who's also on the Symmetra Tour at the moment in the next couple of days. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Again, thanks for Anna. And here's one more for you before we go. What would you give what, – what's the best advice you would give to an 11-year-old middle-of-the-road golfer? The first thing is to enjoy it. Um, just enjoy playing golf first. Um, I think that's incredibly important for success um, is that you enjoy what you're doing. And so even though you might be middle of the road, as long as you're enjoying it, that's by far the first step. Um, and then just keep working, kind of depending on maybe where your goals might be. Definitely practice short game. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> um, and just kind of see where it takes you. I think if you put in the work and the time, then you'll get where you want to go. All right. Thanks, Anna. Thanks. <laughs>